Yo, let's talk about trade, baby. But not the sexy kind. I'm talking about the kind that's been screwing over Africa for centuries. We're going way back to the days of colonialism, to a time when a shiny trinket could buy you a whole lot more than just a smile. Our story takes us to Kenya, where a king named Nabongo Mumia ruled the Wanga Kingdom. Now, King Mumia wasn't your average king. He had a bit of a weakness for shiny new things. So when some European fellas rolled up with a bicycle, Mumia was mesmerized. They saw their chance and offered him a deal, his kingdom for the bike. And guess what? He took it. Now, I know what you're thinking, Trevor. Are you serious? A whole kingdom for a bicycle? But that, my friends, is the point. Colonialism was all about exploiting naivete and desperation. They offered trinkets and promises while they were really after Africa's resources and labor. And unfortunately, the story of Nabongo Mumia is just one example of how that played out. Fast forward to today, and you might think things have changed. We've got fancy trade agreements and talk of partnerships. But let me tell you, the legacy of exploitation is alive and well, my friends. Take the recent ban on used clothing imports by Rwanda and Uganda. These countries are saying enough is enough to be the dumping ground for America's used clothes. See, these used clothes might seem like a good deal at first, cheap threads for everyone. But the reality is that it's harming their local textile industries. The clothes are manufactured in Kenya's export processing zones with Kenyan labor in tax-free factories, exported to the USA, and then re-imported after use. When you flood a market with cheap used clothes, it makes it almost impossible for local businesses to compete. People lose their jobs, factories close down, and the entire industry suffers. It's like bringing a knife to a gunfight, except the knife is a faded I Heart NY t-shirt. Now America, being America, isn't too happy about this ban. They cry foul, waving around this thing called AGOA, the African Growth and Opportunity Act. On paper, AGOA sounds great. It promises duty-free access to US markets for African countries. Sounds like a sweet deal, right? Uh, but here's the catch. AGOA comes with strings attached, lots of them. African countries have to play by America's rules which often means opening up their own markets to a flood of cheap American goods. It's like your friend inviting you over for dinner, but only if you agree to clean their entire house first. This whole situation just highlights the hypocrisy at the heart of America's trade policies. They preach about the virtues of free trade and open markets, but when African countries try to protect their own industries, suddenly it's a problem. Section 4. The Kenyan Rose. A thorny example of trade imbalance. Let's bring this home with a real-life example. The Kenyan cut flower industry. Kenya is one of the world's largest exporters of roses, supplying those beautiful blooms to supermarkets and florists all over the world. Sounds like a success story, right? Well, hold your horses. While those Kenyan roses might look pretty sitting on your dining room table, the reality for Kenyan farmers is much less rosy. See, they're forced to sell their flowers at rock-bottom prices to compete in the global market. And to make matters worse, they face huge tariffs and trade barriers when trying to sell those flowers in the US. So what do we have? American consumers get cheap flowers while Kenyan farmers struggle to make ends meet. It's a classic example of how imbalanced trade agreements can perpetuate poverty and inequality. Section 5, Beyond Charity, a call for mutually beneficial partnerships. Look, I'm not saying that America is solely responsible for all of Africa's problems, but it's time to acknowledge the historical context, the double standards, and the very real consequences of these imbalanced trade relationships. What Africa needs isn't charity or handouts. It needs fair and equitable partnerships that respect its right to develop its own industries and create a brighter future for its people. That means supporting initiatives that promote local production, 
invest in infrastructure and empower African entrepreneurs. And to my fellow people of African descent around the world, we have a responsibility to speak up and demand better for the motherland. Let's push our leaders to move beyond empty promises and start building truly mutually beneficial partnerships with Africa. The time for change is now.